Hi YouTube. Today I'm going to try to show you guys how I change out the carburetor on our Champion generators, the 3500 running watts, 4000 um, startup watts generator. Now, these, one thing about these generators I found out, particular Champion, because that's the one that, that we have two Champion generators. They're very strong. They're built to last. You know, they're built to sustain the, um, the hardship of running for long hours and things like that. But these generators, expensive as they are, they have very fragile, flimsy, they tend to have little flimsy plastic um, moving parts, which I don't think is a very good idea. I think it's a very um, poor um, engineering ideal to have these little flimsy parts. Now this part here is the choker level, lever, lever, leveler <laughs> for the choker uh, right before you start it. And um, now here, this one is good. This type of movement is um, you're finding all the, you know, the levers of the Champion generator. But it goes bad. It it rubs out. I think this part here is the part that rubs out. And then while you're running the generator with the choke closed, it could bounce, reopen which you know was causes the generator to shut down and you know make you think that you're running out of gasoline which you probably are running out of gas it make it run poorly too so i'm replacing this whole part because um i wasn't able to find just this little replacement part here and i don't know if the the metal rub i think the the plastic this plastic part right here I'm pretty sure, 90% sure, that this is the part that wore down, and now the choke will not stay in position while the generator is running. So I'm replacing the whole thing here, and I've been having some other issues with the generator, but I'm hoping that this will um, get it back up and running. The um, let me see this this whole part here is called the the carburetor. So let's go over to the generator. Here's my here's the cover that goes on top of the um I guess I don't know what you call it the but it's all connected to the corporation system. And here's my tools. When you take your screws out, you know, keep up with them because it's very important that you um reattach all the components very tightly. The generator does a natural a, a, a lot of um, vibrating, so all the parts have to be um, re, re reattached very tightly. And um, here, here, so it should be a fairly easy installation. I already took the old um, carburetor off. You have four um, screws. That reattach the cover here, and two larger screws that um, attach the filter. This is the filter um, housing, and here's the filter itself with that in there. And then these two, you have two bolts like this that attach the um, the filter housing to the generator. I mean, to the carburetor. Okay, so all together, um, we, well, all together we have, let me see, four and two. Okay, yes, all together we have seven. But this big bolt here attaches the um, filter housing to a metal um, rod. Okay, so it's kind of cold out here. So I'm going to try to do this quick, but I want you guys to get an idea that um, these generators, champion generators, they are very robust, very sturdy, but they're very delicate at the same time. If you put too much oil in it, it won't run. If you don't have enough oil in it, 
it, it will not run if um, this nice little feature that they have where the um, it's a oil measure I don't know what you call it but um, it measures the the oil inside there which is better off uh, I, I've never been a big fan of be bells and whistles I've never been a big fan of bells and whistles because they tend to just be something else that you have to worry about having problems with and um, so if your oil regulator goes bad your generator will not work so I find that the best way to regulate your oil is just to manually check it um, I, I saw a YouTube a YouTube video showing um, how to disconnect it and that's what I did so that can be one less thing that I can worry about trying to troubleshoot and here's both our generators one went bad and by the time this that's this is the one that went bad um, a couple years ago and by the time we found someone that worked on generators that would repair it we had already purchased another one which out here um, in the desert in the mountains their view of the mountains over there it is better to have two of everything that you possibly can but that is how we ended up with two generators one went bad and it took us nearly a year to find someone to repair it in the meantime we just purchased another one we purchased this one here and um, so they repaired it and um, like I say there's a lot of minor problems that could go wrong with a champion generator and because of these little plastic parts these little plastic um, moving parts a lot of times your problem could be very simple and one thing um, when you're out here in the mountains or the wilderness uh oh wherever you are you want to have your tools organized and handy so when you need them or when you're about to re when you're ready to use them you don't you do not have to gather them up and look for them and find them and everything so i currently i'm keeping all my little handy tools the things that i usually need out here i just keep them in this little plastic bag they're my um my wrenches that I know that fit the um, the generator, the parts, the bolts, and and things. So I'm going to I'm going to have to put the camera down, but I'm going to try to show you guys. kind of windy out here now I already have gasoline in here because it wasn't working properly so we couldn't run it we ran the other one Oh, well, I shouldn't say out here. It's good to have as many tools as you can. But if you just have the tools that you need, that is good too. So I just have a few wrenches. And I have to find the one that um, fits here, fit these parts. Okay, first I'm going to have to take my gloves off so I can actually handle this thing properly. I had a piece of duct tape on here just to make sure no incense, no insects or anything fall inside.
when you have these little gaskets, I think they're very, I think they're important to um, keep you from having a leak. But at the same time, um, if you lose one or break one, it'll be okay, especially um, until you replace, you know, you get, you get to a store that carries them and you're able to replace them. As long as you um, reinstall everything very tightly. spring goes down in there and see and that's why I say you want um, to have your tools organized or all all together so you don't have to be searching all over the place looking for your tools that'd be one less thing you have to worry about because this installation is it's pretty simple especially um, if you've worked on the generator a little bit in the past, and you're kind of familiar with the, you know, you're just not so intimidated. 